Hey, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to create an animation of a traffic light pole inside of Blender using Blender 3.0, actually. So, if you like this kind of tutorial, please subscribe and click the notification bell. So, every time I post a new tutorial about how to use Blender for animation or architectural visualization, you will know that, okay? So, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing you're gonna need is to download a traffic light pole asset. So, to make your life easier, I will allow you to download this same asset, putting the link in the description below. But if you want, you can model it from scratch. As soon as you have this asset on your computer, all you need to do is come here to File, Import, Import FBX. In our case, let's turn off the animation because we don't need these animations from this file because we're gonna do our own animation. So let's import it. Now that we have this asset imported on Blender, let's change the geometry because as you can see, all the time that we import a FBX file inside of Blender, it comes with triangles everywhere. So let's select everything by pressing A and let's press. And this will allow us to transform the triangles in quads. As you can see now, our geometry is cleaner on our screen. This will make sure that we will have less trouble by selecting stuff inside of Blender. So now let's hold the Shift key, select the middle vertex in front of each of those lamps and let's press Ctrl plus to select only the front of those things. You can see that now we are removing the light, but all we need to do is to press Shift D to duplicate, right mouse button to release it, P to separate, and let's separate it by selection. Now we can go out of the edit mode by pressing Tab and select only those lamps here. I will divide my screen real quick so we can change the material of this object right now. So let's put it in the handheld preview. In my case, I'm using Cyclos X and I'm using also the Nishita Sky Texture in this case. And now let's change the material in front of those things because the reason why I separate that stuff is because I want to have a glass in front of our lights. So I will move it uh, ahead a little bit. And now I will add two modifiers. So coming here to the modifier section, I will add a solidify modifier. Let's press slash on our keypad and look it by the side. Also, you can see that the, the modifier is kind of messy, so let's press Ctrl A and let's apply the scale. Let's also reduce the scale for about 5 millimeters, millimeters. It's more than good enough. And let's also add a bevel modifier, which will make the corners rounded. Two segments is more than enough, and you can reduce also this thing here, just to make sure that we don't gonna have any kind of overlap going on. Let's come back here and let's go to the material properties. In the material properties, selecting only this object here, which will be the glass in front of our lights. Let's just come here to this minus button and remove all those materials because you don't want to have any material in front of these objects besides the material we really want, which is the glass material. So let's come here and change it for the shader editor, shader editor create a new material, call it glass. And this glass will be just a glass. So remove the principal shader, shift A, shader, glass shader. This is more than enough for this kind of effect that we are looking for right now. So the second thing we're gonna change is the light materials as well. In our case, we have this material here, which is good because we don't need to bother about how those lights look behind the glass. So let's delete the principal shading and that normal map press shift A and let's add our first shader, which will be the emission shader. In this case, we're gonna need two shaders. The emission shaders to allow us to turn on and off in this light. So let's increase the strength, about five will be enough. But also let's add a shader, a diffuse shader. We don't need to add more than a diffuse shader because this thing here is below a glass and the glass has more than enough stuff going on to make sure that the diffuse won't look weird. So let's put it in the surface and as you can see, the glass is reflecting stuff and the thing behind is just appear as normal. So to make this light look more turn it off because in this case it's more like a king, this stuff, I don't know. Let's press Shift A, color, and let's add a hue saturation stuff. The hue saturation will allow us to reduce the value. So put the value of 0.1, you can see that now the light is looking like our turned off light. Last thing you're gonna do is to press Shift A, come here to shader, mix shader, 
and let's mix those two shaders as you can see. Uh, make sure that they are in this exact uh, configuration, not this one, because the default value for the light will be the off, the zero, and the one will be the turn it on stage. If we invert that, things can become a little bit weird for our human minds, you know? One for off makes no sense. So let's keep it in the off state by putting the factor in zero. Let's copy and let's place those on all the other lights, like the yellow light and the green light. Now all our lights are configured, and you can use the mix shader to animate the states of those lights. So let's come here to the red sign, and in the red sign we will put the mix shader on one, allowing it to look like a turned on light. Bringing our timeline up, I will move to the frame 20, and I will press, and I will press the right mouse button to insert a keyframe on top of this mix shader. And moving three or four frames ahead, I will reduce the factor to zero and I'll press the right mouse button and click insert keyframe. I won't put this keyframe basically at the same position because this transition here is good for our effect. As you can see, having a little bit of a transition between states make the effect look better. So moving the needle in the timeline some frames ahead, Let's go here to the green light and let's place a keyframe here on top of the zero stage. So it, we're gonna have a frame that will keep the light off for a little bit and we'll move some frames ahead, increase the factor to one and insert a new keyframe. So by pressing the play button, you can see our, uh, so by pressing the play button, you can see our animation working. This animation also will work on Nivi, so to make sure that it will look good on Nivi, all you need to do is to change the configuration on the glass material in front of those lights. To do that, just come here to the material section with your glass material selected, your glass object and material selected. Go here to viewport display, change the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend, the shadow mode to none, and turn on the screen space refract, which allow the glass to behave more like a glass, as you can see. And by play, pressing play, you can see the animation working properly on Eevee as well. Okay, now let's press Shift A and add a camera and prepare this file to export our animation. So to bring this camera to my view, all we need to do is to press, to press Ctrl Alt 0. And by pressing G, I will move my camera and by press the middle mouse button, I will move my camera behind and I will position this stuff more or less on the thirds in my, in my view. So doing something like this will be good enough for our case. So, by changing some materials and change a little bit of the lightning behind our stuff, we're gonna have this result, it's, be, it's more than good enough for our example. And now, let's prepare it to render it, because I know you need to render this thing to have an animation in your computer. So, how are we gonna prepare this file for the rendering process? To do that, let's come here to the Composite tab. I will delete all my stuff here, just to not, <laughs> not make you confused. And you just need to click here in Use Notes, first thing first. I will press Ctrl space bar to increase my screen. And all we need to do is to add a Shift A, File Output. And all we're gonna do is to press Shift A, Output, File Output. Let's plug the image on the file output and let's change the folder where we're gonna save this thing. So in my case, I will come here to my handling tab. So in my case, I will come here to my animation and I will create a new Hender stuff, handering tutorial, where I'm gonna save all the frames in my animation. I've been using Cyclos X, which is more than enough for my case because it's really fast. Coming here to my handering section, I will come here to sampling, and besides use the samples, I will use the time limit. In my case, I will use 15 seconds for each frame. I won't turn on the denoise in my case because uh, a little bit of noise in this scene will be interesting for the final shot and here in the advanced section you need to turn on this 
button here, the use animated seed. This will allow Blender to create a random seed for each shot so the noise for each frame will be different and this effect will allow us to have our more compelling shot in the end of our rendering process okay so turn it on is really important <clears throat> in your computer the configuration can be different so try it on your computer as less time as you need to have a clear shot and put this time here on the time limit because each frame will take exactly that time to rendering. So test on your computer how long will be necessary to have a clean shot and then you can just put how much seconds you want here or how much minutes you need. In my case, I'll put 15 seconds because for my RTX 2070 will be good enough. And then you can just come here to render and click here in render animation. Just to save a little bit of time, I will use the image sequence that I saved from my older file in this part of the tutorial. So in my case, the only thing that is different from yours is that I'm using an animated, I'm using an animated tree from the vegetation add-on. So just to add more things in my scene going on, I will put that image sequence on Blender right now to make our final shot. To do that, all we need to do is to open a new instance of Blender. But besides to use the 3D modeling stuff, we're gonna come here to File, New, and you're gonna select the Video Editing preset. This will give us a video editing stuff and the rendering stuff. So let's come here to this sequence stuff. Let's press Shift A and add an image sequence. The image sequence should be the same image sequence on the folder you saved your file, okay? So all we need to do is to select everything that you have on this folder, the 120 frames in my case, and add a stripe here. You can see that the stripe will become something solid. And if, if you press the play button, you can see the animation working. Let's put the frame into 120, which is the exact same size of my stripe. And now what you need to do is to add more details on this animation because now it's all muted. So let's add some sound effects, you know? to make things pop up, to make things more alive. The first sound effect that I'm gonna add will be a sound effect of a wind. So I'll press Shift A and I'll add a sound. In my computer, I have some sound effects that I saved that I download for free on the internet. I advise you to research for some free sound effects on Google. I think you are smart enough to do that by yourself because I don't even remember where I found those sound effects here, as you can see. But I'm gonna use two sound effects for this case. I'll use a wind sound effect that I found for free on the internet. So now, so now if I press the play button, you can hear the sound. And also the second sound effect that I will add will be by pressing Shift A. Let's put it on the front, Shift A, sound. And I will add a car sound effect, a car passing by, which is also a free sound effect that I found on the internet. Now you can hear that we have a car passing by and the wind. Both of those sounds are too loud, so let's reduce. Uh, I will reduce the sound of the passing by car by 2.2 and I will put the wind effect to 2.1. Now you can hear. And it's, and now it's looking better. It's feeling better, it's feeling more natural. So I will put the needle of our animation in the end here. I will select everything besides this object here and I will press the K key to cut the parts that I don't need. So now I can select everything like this and press delete to remove it. So now all, all we have is our shot and our sound effect. Perfect, now let's render it. Now to render the final stuff, we need to go here to the file output stuff and come here to the file output, we need to change the folder. So let's change the folder first, a folder that we're gonna really need or we're gonna really use, for example, the animation stuff here, I don't know. Just select a folder and click accept. So as soon as you finish your rendering, the thing will be saved on your computer and not in a temporary file folder, you know. Anyway, let's do that. So the format will be FFMP MPEG video. It's good enough. The encoding can be MP4. And for the sound effects, you can come here to audio and you can change the codec for something like, I don't know, MP3, just to, you know, 
mp4 mp3 make things similar i don't know i just know that mp3 will work so let's add that and finally you can come here and handling your final stuff to do that just come here to handling handle animation and you can see that it will be really 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 quick to do that so 120 frames basically did in no time at all now you can just come here to the output stuff and found the folder where you saved your animation and finally we have a final file on our computer with sound that we can post online and flex for our friends showing that we know how to do a traffic light animation on blender so if you like this tutorial click the like button and also subscribe so you can see more about how to use blender for animations like that and also how to use blender for architectural visualization as well thanks for watching and i'll see you in our next video bye see you soon and take care